Do you know that these little glass chemistry toys are called hand boilers? And although they use the warmth of your hand to operate, there's no boiling involved. Let me explain why and show you a trick you might not know of yet. In case you're not familiar with these very carefully designed pieces of apparatus, you should know that they are a sealed glass container, one with a bulb at the top and the bottom and a variety of different shapes tubing in the middle. This one happens to be heart-shaped because I love chemistry. In the bottom bulb, you have a mixture of ethanol and a dye solution. The dye could be a variety of different colors to make it a little more fun. When you place these very carefully in the palm of your hand, the warmth of your hand causes a solution to travel up through the tubing until it gets to the top bulb, where it appears to be boiling, but it's just some bubbling occurring. If you want to reverse this operation, all you have to do is switch bulbs, and the solution will travel in reverse. Let me explain to you just why there's bubbling occurring and no boiling. First and foremost, at the surface of any liquid, the molecules there are breaking intermolecular forces or the attractions between those molecules. And when they do so, they're able to leave the liquid state and enter the gaseous state. And once there, they create a little bit of pressure at the surface of that liquid. We call this vapor pressure. Any liquid has a certain amount of vapor pressure associated with it at a given temperature. Just how much depends upon the strength of the intermolecular forces that particular species experiences. Species with weaker intermolecular forces are able to escape to the gaseous phase much easier, creating a greater vapor pressure. This is exactly why we use ethanol in a hand boiler instead of water. Ethanol and water both experience the intermolecular force known as hydrogen bonding. But due to its structure, ethanol experiences less hydrogen bonding, meaning those ethanol molecules can escape to the gaseous state a little more quickly, create more vapor pressure, and be a little more volatile. And those gas molecules are key to making a hand boiler work. There's a second chemistry concept in play here, a little gas law known as Gay-Lussac's law, which states that for a gas at a constant volume, in other words, a sealed rigid container, and a constant number of moles, the pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So if temperature goes up, pressure goes up. If temperature goes down, pressure goes down. When you place that hand boiler in your hand, the warmth of your hand increases the temperature of the gas molecules sitting above that solution of ethanol and dye. That increases the vapor pressure and forces that solution up through the tubing to the top bulb. Once the majority of that solution gets up to that top bulb, then the gas bubbles also travel through the tubing, making that solution appear to boil, but it's just the gaseous ethanol bubbling through the tubing. Now let me show you a little trick you may not be aware of with these toys. The very first thing you're gonna need to do is ensure that all of the solution is in the bottom bowl. This might require you to twist and turn your apparatus ever so slightly to make sure the solution gets through the tricky tubing part. Next, you're gonna need a beaker or glass of ice water. Then you're gonna take your hand boiler and you're gonna flip it upside down. What this does is it ensures that the solution is down below the tubing that runs into that larger bulb. Once it's flipped, you're still going to need to wrap your palm around that bulb. So place it between your fingers and then close your hand. This is still going to allow the warmth of your hand to increase the temperature of the ethanol vapor inside that bowl. Except this time, only the gaseous ethanol is going to be able to travel through the tube. So once we're collecting some of that ethanol vapor down into that lower bulb, we're going to take it and carefully place it down into our ice water just like so. Depending upon the warmth of your hand, it shouldn't take much time at all for you to start to observe a clear solution forming in the bottom bulb. The reason why it's clear 
is because in the top bulb, you only have gaseous ethanol. Those dye molecules, they're never able to reach the vapor state. So the only molecules traveling through the tube this time are the gaseous ethanol. When they reach the bottom bulb, that bottom bulb is now down in that ice water and being cooled. So the gaseous ethanol is able to condense back to the liquid state. If you leave that bottom bulb in that ice water for about 10 to 20 minutes, this will allow you to collect all of the ethanol in the bottom bulb and the two solutions will be separated just like in a distillation. I hope a little learning has occurred here. Like and subscribe for more chemistry content and I hope you have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.